Getting good at CAD is often about learning all of the tools and features available from your chosen package. But what if there was a way to come up with custom tools to accomplish great things with little effort? Today I share with you the most powerful free feature scripts. This video is part of a series on learning 3D design for 3D printing using a free Onshape account. The rest of the playlist is linked below in the video description. And this is my best attempt at growing a moustache for Movember. Thank you to those who have donated so far, and if you've got a few dollars spare, please visit the link below. Today, we're talking about feature scripts in Onshape that grant the ability for users to make their own custom features as complicated as they want, but with a simple interface. So today I'm going to share with you the best ones so you can take your 3D models to the next level. It might not be obvious, but Onshape is a lot like OpenSCAD underneath the surface. All of the tools that make up the package are based on code, and believe it or not, it's even open source, in that you can at least see the source code that underpins all of these functions. And this means that users, if they're so inclined, can write their own code to extend the standard features. And the mechanism to do this is called Feature Script. There's extensive documentation available for everything you should need, as well as a free online course, but be warned, it is quite a lot harder than something like writing Arduino code. When a feature script is finished and ready for others to use, it's going to look something like this. But fortunately to use them, you don't need to understand this code in the slightest. A lot of the code here goes into building the user interface to make it look like a native on shape tool. In fact, to install them, all you need is the web address where the feature script was written. To install a feature script, we're going to come up to the feature script menu and the icon you will see here might be different depending on whether you have any installed and which ones are at the top. But if necessary, we'll scroll to the bottom and go to add custom features. We can then paste in that URL, click the search icon and any feature scripts found within that document will appear where we can then select them, clicking through until we get confirmation that they're added to our toolbar. If a feature script needs updating, it'll have this blue symbol on the edge of the icon. From here, we can simply right click and go to update and then confirm that in the new dialog box. Soon after, you'll get confirmation at the top. If we want to share a feature script with others, we can again right click and then go to open linked document. And this web address at the top is what we can share with them so they can install the feature script too. If we want to delete a feature script, we right click and then go to remove. There'll be a confirmation message at the top of the screen. Now that we know what they are and how they work, let's start working our way through some of my favorites. Some of these I've picked up doing specific projects over the years, but there are other places to specifically search for new feature scripts. The first of those is the feature script section of the Onshape forum. Although a lot of the topics are people asking for help writing their own feature scripts, people will announce new feature scripts here, including this thread, which is a user community spotlight. In making this video, I also found this great compilation of feature scripts from D Cowden. Much like I'm about to do, they're organized into different categories and there's a brief description for each so you can see if you're interested. Our first category is gears and threads. And for a long time, Onshape didn't have a native thread tool, but now it does for external threads at least. We can click here, specify some numbers and then click the tick, but we get a somewhat limited preview. That's why I prefer Thread Creator, a feature script by Dave Cowden, who surely is the same person who's running this GitHub repo. Once we run the feature script, we select the face to thread. We can select the type we want, enter other parameters such as the pitch, number of starts, and whether we want thread the whole way or to limit it to a number of turns or distance. And when we're done, we click the tick and we have our fully formed thread labeled in the feature list and present in 3D. This works for internal or external threads. And I've had a lot of success 3D printing these threads after adjustments were made for 3D printing, such as making the internal bores a little bit wider. Another feature script I've been using for a long time is Spur Gear by Neil Cook. This one is driven by the vertex in a sketch. So once we select that point, the Spur Gear will be created there. We have a lot of different options, generally more than you'll need to make simple gears, but some that you might recognize are clicking to make them helical. That's when the meshing teeth are angled, which can reduce noise. You can have a double helix like we used to see with old RepRap 3D printer extruders and you can also turn on and specify a center bore with optional keyway. One tip I'd have here is to create a sketch that not only has the vertices that will be the anchors, but also to map out where you want your gears to mesh. 
you can then ensure that your pitch circle diameter is matched to this and everything is going to align. This is another feature script that I use all the time with great success. If we need a 90 degree transmission, there's also bevel gear. Using this feature script, we'll create two bevel gears, one locked to the origin and the other one positioned to mesh correctly. If you need to change the ratio, simply change the number of teeth. We can also alter the angle of the gears. And again, if we like, tick to add center bores and optional keyways. And if you need a worm gear, there's a feature script for that too. This one again is locked to the origin. And as you'd expect, there's a range of parameters we can tweak. The fun here comes from just doing trial and error and altering the numbers until you get what you want or until you break something. But there's even more than that, such as Planetary Gears by Maximilian Schirmer. This one again spoils the gears in the origin. And as you would expect, there's plenty of parameters to change to tune it to your liking. And very helpfully, you'll notice that as you change the parameters, you'll have this notification up the top to tell you the different ratios. If you really want to experiment with gearboxes, I've got a treat for you, which I found in this video by Mission Machine. To go with the video, they've created a custom feature script for a cycloidal drive. Rather than me go through all the parameters, I've linked the video below, as well as this page that has links to various models, including a gearbox already matched to a NEMA 17 stepper. Let's switch gears and look at feature scripts suitable for makers and 3D printing specifically. Let's say you're designing a structure built from 2020 extrusion. Modeling that could be a pain, but we have two good options. The first is 8020 Ink Profile Generator by Parametric Products. And as you can see from the preview here, there's a lot of different extrusion profiles supported. We can click a sketch point that we want to anchor to and then select from the drop downs whatever profile that we're after. For instance here, 2020, 2040 or 4040. After that, we enter the length, click the tick and our extrusion is very quickly modeled. An older alternative that I think is a little bit easy to use is Beams by Neil Cook. If you look through the menus, you should be able to find pretty much any type of profile you're after. But what I really like about this one is that all we need is a single line and we can do multiple extrusions at once. And this is what feature scripts are all about. Complex geometry, but easy for the user to create. And we can see this here with this project where a simple sketch with four lines can be used to very quickly build up the frame and speed up your workflow. You might have noticed when 3D printing that sometimes a ball with a hole magically print without support. And if we look at a wireframe version of this part, we can see bridges have been added to the lower surface, essentially allowing it to print in midair bit by bit. Rather than doing it manually, here's a feature script called Bridge Counter Ball by Imance Smidgens. We model the rest of the object as normal, start this feature script and select the faces we want to modify. Because select matching faces is ticked, it's automatically found the other three on this model. And all I really need to do is enter my layer height or stick with the default of 0.2 millimeters. This case will now print without support using a one-click feature script. Still relevant to 3D printing, but not specifically limited to it, are these structural and surface pattern feature scripts. In an earlier video in this series, I designed a shelf that had a large section with a crosshatch pattern to increase the strength. The trouble was, I drew the whole pattern manually, which was very time consuming to sketch and then extrude. So let's revisit that document, suppress the old laborious version and find a better way. The first feature script we're going to use is by Ilya Baron and it's called Lighten. I've made the original surface solid and I've just done a simple sketch snapping from edge to edge on that surface that I want to break up. As you'll soon see, it's important to add extra lines around features that you want to be reinforced and strong. From here, we run the Lighten feature script and we simply click in the middle of those segments created by our simple sketch. If you don't see anything in the preview, try lowering the thickness of the walls. You can play with the parameters until you're happy. And if you don't want the cut to go the whole way through, it's easy to change this too. The strength of this will depend on where you draw the lines in that sketch, but it's still much faster than my previous method. Another option we have to solve this problem is Fill Pattern by Neil Cook. For this one, on the surface, we draw a single version of whatever we want patterned. We then extrude it through as a cut. When we start the feature script, the faces to pattern is the internal surfaces of the cut we just made, and then the target boundary is the face that we want to break up. Finally, we have a direction which is generally just a straight line, and instantly we can see our diamond pattern is being applied the whole way across that surface. You'll probably want some sort of border to keep them away from the edge, and in my case, I want them a lot closer. When we hit the tick, the pattern is applied, and we can see in the result that a downside is that the pattern is not applied where it would overlap that border. 
This one probably works better with something like a circle or a hexagon. Then you can really pack in the pattern and break up that surface a lot more. This next one is my favorite in the whole video and it's called a tractor pattern. And I'll only do a quick demonstration because as you can see, there's a full video tutorial embedded in the document. This feature script was created by Evan Reese. Let's say we have a really organic curvy surface like this script and we want to apply a texture to it. That is normally going to be a time consuming nightmare. So let's see how easy this is with a tractor pattern. I've created a simple sphere and then added a make connector in the center of that, which is going to act like an anchor. Let's now start the attractor pattern feature script. Our base surface is going to be the grip. Our input body is going to be that sphere and our make connector is going to be the make connector. Our final input is the attractor. And for now, we'll just click this top surface. As soon as we do, we can see the sphere is being applied over the surface. Let's shrink our inputs and start playing with the grid. And I'm going to change it from rectangular to triangular and I'm going to up the count for both directions. Already, this is a pretty handy tool. We can set it to add and tell it to merge with the base grip. Already a handy tool, but we're only using half of it. So let's edit the feature. Now, if we come to instance parameters and tick any of these boxes, we can see the full power of this feature script. I've ticked scale and let's set the near value to two. And as you can see, the spheres up the top are twice as big as the ones down the bottom. And that's based on our seed surface that we set on top. So I'm going to come back to the attractor input, delete the top surface and select all of the tangent edges around the perimeter. I'm going to set my near size to 0.2. And now we can see that the spheres in the middle are full size, but they fade down as they get closer to any of those edges. Here's an alternate version using depth, which means the spheres will sink into the surface the closer they get to that attractor edge. This is a basic example. So let's take it a bit further here. I've set up a nice gently curving surface. And then I've got a star extrusion with a beveled edge and of course a mate connector in the middle. And with the two together, here's another example of what can be achieved in only a minute or so. I've got a dense triangular grid and I've told my star to be smaller on the edges and get bigger as it heads towards the center. How about a version where I set it to subtract instead of add and now all of these shapes are indented into the surface. And here's another variation where I've upped the density of the grid quite a bit and that means the outer shapes are isolated with space around them, but towards the center, they overlap and create this really cool pattern. For me, this is such a great feature script because you can get some really dynamic and interesting shapes with very minimal effort. And that's what feature scripts should be all about. Let's finish with a couple more that don't fit into other categories. Did you know that an airfoil like a plane wing could be defined mathematically? And there's a system to do this with only four digits called NACA. And you guessed it, a feature script has been created to do this automatically. In preparation, all we need is a single line that will define the start and end of the wing. We can then run the feature script, select a plane, click the leading edge, and then the trailing edge. Instantly, our aerofoil is drawn. And if we know the NACA profile we're after, we can input those numbers and the aerofoil will update instantly to match. Extrude the resultant sketch and you've got yourself a proper airfoil. I've used these before to create proper propellers with two NACA profiles and lofts in between them. This last one's really random, but super novel. And it's called the Puzzleinator by Amant Smidgens. It can turn any solid you have in on shape into a puzzle. All you need is that solid and then a make connector with the blue axis facing the way you want to cut the puzzle pieces. We click our part to slice, expand the advanced options and then select our make connector. Instantly, whatever our object is, is turned into a puzzle with the amount of slices we've input. If you're 3D printing and you need all of them to fit together, you can change the curve value and this will put a little bit of space in between. If you want to change the pattern of the puzzle, simply input a different seed number. Again, minimal effort for quite a good result. Too bad this doesn't work with meshes and STLs or a bisending Sam Prentice, a 3D puzzle of his own head for Christmas. That's it. And I hope there's something here that will make your Onshape experience even better. Of course, this list can be extended, so please leave your suggestions in the comments section so everyone can benefit. Thank you to all the authors for creating these great feature scripts. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy advanced 3D modeling. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.